warm welcome to the new session of molecular biology here we are going to deal with the topic of dna replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes dna itself replicates before a cell enter into mitosis complete and accurate dna replication is integral to the maintenance of the genetic integrity of all organisms Watson and Crick first reasoned that complementary base pairing provides the basis of fidelity in DNA replication. That is, each base in the template strand dictates the complementary base in the new strand. As the two strands separate, the purine and pyrimidine bases on each strand are exposed. The exposed bases then attract their complementary bases. That is, DNA replication of one helix of DNA results in two identical helix. If the original DNA helix is called the parental DNA, the two resulting helix can be called daughter helix. Each of these two daughter helix is a nearly exact copy of the parental. DNA replication. The first step in DNA replication is the separation of the two DNA strands by DNA helicase enzyme. DNA helicase untwist the helix from specific locations called origin of replication. The replication origin forms a Y shape and is called a replication fork. Single standard binding proteins that is SSB work with helicase enzyme to maintain the parental DNA helix unwound. A replication fork consists of four components that form in the following sequence. First one, the DNA helicase unwinds a short segment of the parental duplex DNA. Next, a primase initiates synthesis of an RNA molecule that is essential for priming DNA synthesis. Third, the DNA polymerase initiates a daughter strand synthesis. And last one, SSBs bind to single standard DNA and prevent premature re-annealing of single standard DNA to double standard DNA. Now look at the table. The first column consists of the enzymes and the next column which stands for the functions of these particular proteins. The first enzyme is DNA polymerases. It is for deoxynucleotide polymerization and second one is helicases. It is for processive unwinding of DNA. And third one is topoisomerases. Its function for relieve torsional strain that results from helicase induced unwinding. And next one is DNA primase enzyme that initiates synthesis of RNA primers. And next one is single standard binding proteins, and which stands for prevent premature reannealing of double standard DNA. And next is DNA ligase enzyme which seals the single strand nick between the nascent chain and Okazaki fragments on lagging strand. In the late 1950s, Arthur Kornberg successfully identified and purified the first DNA polymerase, an enzyme that catalyzes the replication reaction. DNA polymerases catalyze the one by one addition of deoxyribonucleotide units to a DNA chain. Polymerase activity which catalyzes chain growth in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity which removes mismatched bases and 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity which degrades double standard DNA. If single standard, the template DNA must be bound to a primer strand having a free 3 prime hydroxyl group. The reaction also requires all four deoxynucleoside that is 5 prime triphosphate DATP, DGTP, DTTP and DCTP as well as magnesium 2 plus iron. Elongation of the DNA chain proceeds in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. The catalytic mechanism likely involves two magnesium ions coordinated to the phosphate groups of the incoming nucleotide triphosphate 
and to three asparagine residues two of which are highly conserved in all dna polymerases many dna polymerases also have a separate nuclease activity that allows them to correct mistakes in dna by using a different reaction to remove mismatched nucleotides these properties of dna polymerases contribute to the remarkably high fidelity of dna replication which has an error rate of less than 10 raised to minus 8 per base pair semi conservative replication dna replication is semi conservative each dna strand acts as a template and synthesizes two new daughter strands each with one new strand and one old strand this is called semi conservative replication watson and crick proposed the hypothesis of semi conservative replication after publication of their paper on the structure of dna in 1953 and the hypothesis was established by experiments carried out by matthew misselson and franklin stahl in 1957 E. coli cells were grown for many generations in a medium containing only heavy nitrogen N15 so that all the nitrogen in their DNA was N15. This will give a single band shown in pink color after cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation. Then the cells were transferred to a medium containing only light nitrogen that is N14. DNA isolated after one generation equilibrated at a higher position in the density gradient it will give an intermediate it shown in purple color continuation of replication for a second generation yielded two hybrid dnas and two light dnas it shown in red color confirming semi conservative replication dna replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes The process of DNA replication is complex and involves many cellular functions and several verification procedures to ensure fidelity in replication. Replication patterns are somewhat different in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This process is almost certainly more complex in eukaryotic organisms than prokaryotes. The synthesis of a dna molecule can be divided into three stages initiation elongation and termination initiation in e coli replication begins at a single point called the origin of replication the e coli replication origin or ec it consists of 245 base pair that is highly conserved among bacterial replication origins there are two series of short repeats three repeats of a 13 base pair sequence and four repeats of a 9 base pair sequence about 30 proteins are involved in the replication of the e coli chromosome and at least nine different enzymes participate in the initiation phase of replication they open the dna helix at the origin now look at the table the first protein dna protein which is for recognizes ori sequence it's open duplex at specific sites in origin dna b protein which is for unwinds dna dna c protein it's required for dna b binding at origin then hu this histone like proteins dna binding protein and stimulates initiation the next one is primase that's also called dna g protein which synthesizes rna primers the next is single stranded dna binding proteins that is ssb which is for binds single stranded dna rna polymerase which is for facilitates dna a activity dna gyrase it's also called dna topo isomerase 2 which is for relieves torsional strain generated by dna unwinding the next is dam methylase which is for methylates 5 prime gatc sequences at orici 
The crucial component in the initiation process is the DNA A protein. A single complex of 4 to 5 DNA A protein molecules binds to the 4 9 base pair repeats in the origin with the help of ATP and the bacterial histone like protein HU. Then denaturation of DNA in the region of the 3 13 base pair repeats have occurred which are rich in AT pairs. The DNA C protein then loads the DNA B protein onto the unwound region. Two ring shaped hexamers of DNA B, one loaded onto each DNA strand, act as helicases, unwinding the DNA bidirectionally and start a replication by creating two potential replication forks. Synthesis occurs at the replication fork, the place at which the DNA helix is unwound and individual strands are replicated. Two replication forks move outward from the origin until they have copied the whole replication. That portion of the genome that contains an origin and is replicated as a unit. When the replication forks move around the circle, a structure shaped like the Greek letter theta is formed. Finally, since the bacterial chromosome is a single replicon, the fork meet on the other side and two separate chromosomes are released. Rapid unwinding can lead to the formation of supercoils or super tweets in the helix and this will interfere with further unwinding of the double helix. To solve this problem, there is a group of enzymes called DNA topoisomerases, which are responsible for removing supercoils in the helix. In eukaryotes, eukaryotic DNA is linear and much longer than prokaryotic DNA. Clearly, many replication forks much copy eukaryotic DNA simultaneously so that the molecule can be duplicated in a relatively short period. And so many replicants are present that there is an origin about every 10 to 100 micrometer along the DNA. Replication forks move outward from these sites and eventually meet forks that have been copying the adjacent DNA stretch. In this manner, a large molecule is copied quickly. Origins of replication called autonomously replicating sequences that is ARS have been identified and best studied in yeast. Initiation of replication in all eukaryotes requires a multi subunit protein the origin recognition complex is called ORC. Two other proteins CDC6 which is discovered in a screen for genes affecting the cell division cycle and CDT1 that is CDC10 dependent transcript 1 which bind to ORC and mediate the loading of a heterohexamer of mini chromosome maintenance proteins that is MCM2 to MCM7. The MCM complex is a ring shaped replicative helicase which is analogous to the bacterial DNA B helicase. The rate of replication fork movement in eukaryotes that is approximately 50 nucleotides that is only 120 that observed in E. coli. Like bacteria, eukaryotes have several types of DNA polymerases. RPA replication protein A is a eukaryotic single standard DNA binding protein equivalent in function to the E. coli SSB protein. The next is elongation. A new strand of DNA is always synthesized in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. If both strands are synthesized continuously while the replication fork moved, one strand would have to undergo 3 prime to 5 prime synthesis. This problem was resolved by Raichi Okazaki and colleagues in the 1960s. Okazaki found that one of the new DNA strand is synthesized in short pieces now called Okazaki fragments. 
This work ultimately led to the conclusion that one strand is synthesized continuously and other discontinuously. The continuous strand called leading strand in which 5 prime to 3 prime synthesis proceeds in the same direction as replication fork movement. The discontinuous strand or lagging strand is the one in which 5 prime to 3 prime synthesis proceeds in the direction opposite to the direction of fork movement. There are three DNA polymerases in E. coli. The first enzyme that Kornberg purified is called DNA polymerase 1 or pole 1. Pole 2 and pole 3 were identified in E. coli. Pole 2 may repair damaged DNA, although no particular role has been assigned to this enzyme. Pole 3 together with pole 1 has a role in the DNA replication of E. coli. The complete complex or hollow enzyme of pole 3 contains at least 20 different polypeptide subunits, although the catalytic core consists of only 3 subunits, alpha, epsilon and theta. Let us see the comparison of prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA polymerases in this table. DNA polymerase 1 activity requires a single unpaired strand to act as template and a primer strand to provide a free hydroxyl group at the 3 prime end to which a new nucleotide unit is added. One of the RNA polymerase called a primer synthesizes a short RNA primer DNA G protein it's usually around 10 nucleotides long complementary to the DNA. DNA polymerase 3 hollow enzyme then synthesizes complementary DNA beginning at the 3 prime end of the RNA primer. After most of the lagging strand has been synthesized by the formation of Okazaki fragments, DNA polymerase 1 or RNAs H removes the RNA primer. Polymerase 1 synthesizes complementary DNA to fill the gap resulting from RNA deletion. Polymerase 3 hollow enzyme also may be able to fill in the gap. Finally, the fragments are joined by the enzyme DNA ligase, which forms a phosphodiester bond between the 3 prime hydroxyl of the growing strand and the 5 prime phosphate of an Okazaki fragment. Termination. DNA replication stops when the polymerase complex reaches a termination site on the DNA in E. coli. The two replication forks of the circular E. coli chromosome meet at a terminus region containing multiple copies of a 20 base pair sequence called TER for terminus. The TER sequences are arranged on the chromosome to create a sort of trap that a replication fork can enter but cannot leave. The TER sequences function as binding sites for a protein called TUS that is terminus utilization substances. The TUS TER complex can arrest a replication fork from only one direction and holds replication. The final few hundred base pairs of DNA between these large protein complexes are then replicated completing two topologically interlinked circular chromosomes. DNA circles linked in this way are known as catenanes. Separation of catenated circles in E. coli requires topoisomerase 4. It is a type 2 topoisomerase. The separated chromosomes then segregate into daughter cells at a cell division. In many prokaryotes, replication stops randomly when the fork meet. The terminal phase of replication of other circular chromosomes including many of the DNA viruses that infect eukaryotic cells is similar. The termination of replication on linear eukaryotic chromosomes involves the synthesis of special structures called telomerase at the ends of each chromosome. They are generally consisting of many tantum copies of a short oligonucleotide sequence. 
other models for circular DNA replication. DNA organization varied in different organisms. In eukaryotes, DNA is organized into chromosomes, each of which is a single linear piece of DNA. The number of chromosomes is also highly variable in different type of eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, the DNA is typically organized into a single continuous loop of DNA. However, prokaryotes may also contain plasmids which are smaller pieces of circular DNA which are obtained from other bacteria during conjugation. The different organization of different types of DNA requires slightly different methods of replication. For example, rate of replication in E. coli is 1500 nucleotides per second. To complete replication of whole E. coli genome, it takes just 40 minutes. Rate of replication in eukaryote is about 10 to 100 nucleotides per second. To complete replication of simple eukaryotic genome, 6 to 8 hours require. In prokaryotic circular DNA, only one replication fork is present, but in eukaryotic DNA, several replication forks are present. Space between two replication forks in eukaryotes is about 20 kilo base pairs apart. As we discussed earlier, prokaryotic circular DNA is replicated in theta shaped replication. There are other two types of replication in prokaryotes that rolling circle and deep loop models. Rolling circle model, it is also known as S replication. In this mechanism, one strand of DNA is nicked by nicking enzyme and free 3 prime n extended by DNA polymerase. The 3 prime n on the circle is lengthened while the groaning point rolls around the circular template. The 5 prime n is displaced and forms a tail of single standard DNA that extends from the circle. The single standard tail is converted into double standard DNA by synthesis involving RNA primers as in the synthesis of lagging strand of normal DNA replication. This form of replication occurs in the F plasmid or E. coli HFR chromosome during conjugation. The F plus or HFR cell retains the circular daughter while passing the linear tail into the F minus cell where replication of tail takes place. This mechanism is particularly useful to viruses because it allows the rapid continuous production of many genome copies from a single initiation event. In some cases, because there is no termination point, synthesis often continues beyond a single circle unit producing concondamers. The linear concondamer thus created is cleaved into one unit length and packaged into the phage particles. In the conjugation process of plasmids, the displaced strand is transferred into the new cell. The next is D loop model. D loops are generated when additional strands of DNA are taken up by the duplex. They are formed in negatively supercalled DNA. They are most important as intermediates in genetic recombination. Chloroplast and mitochondria in eukaryotic cell have their own circular DNA molecules that appear to replicate by this type of mechanism. Under mildly denaturing mounting conditions, the appearance of displacement loop molecules was observed at significant frequency. This terminology derives from the fact that these molecules contain a region of varying size in which leading strand DNA synthesis has begun and proceeded to different extents at the time of mitochondrial DNA isolation. The most abundant species is one in which 5 prime to 3 prime synthesis is arrested at one or more unique species specific sites generating a D loop of between 0.5 to 1 kb. 
Molecules with larger D loops were observed at lower frequencies. This could be ordered with progressive growth of the nascent leading strand approaching full genomic size. The origin of replication is at a different point on each of the two parental template strands. Replication begins on one strand displacing the other while forming a displacement loop or D loop structure. Replication continues until the process passes the origin of replication on the other strand. The newly synthesized strand known as leading strand. Replication is then initiated on the second strand in the opposite direction which is the lagging strand. When leading strand completely replicated only 1 by 3 of lagging strand is replicated. Then finally the result is 2 circles. Let us summarize what we have discussed in this session. The double helical DNA molecule contains an internal template for its own replication and repair. Each strand acting as template for a new daughter strand. It is carried out in three peculiar phases, initiation, elongation and termination. The reaction starts at the origin and usually proceeds bidirectionally. A complex of proteins including DNA polymerase replicates the leading strand continuously in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. The lagging strand is replicated discontinuously in short pieces of 150 to 250 nucleotides in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. At the replication fork, the leading strand is synthesized continuously in the same direction as the replication fork movement. The lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously as Okazaki fragments. The fidelity of DNA replication is maintained by base selection by the polymerase, a 3 prime to 5 prime proofreading exonuclease activity that is part of most DNA polymerases and specific repair systems for mismatches left behind after replication. Most cells have several DNA polymerases. In E. coli, DNA polymerase 3 is the primary replication enzyme. DNA polymerase 1 is responsible for special functions during replication, recombination and repair. Most circular prokaryotic DNAs are copied by two replication forks moving around the circle to form a theta shaped structure. Apart from theta shaped replication, there are other two types of replication in prokaryotes that is rolling circle and D loop models. Now we have given you some assignments. The first one is define replication fork. The second one is difference between DNA polymerases 1 and 3. And third one is explain heavy isotope analysis of DNA replication. And fourth one is importance of DNA topo isomerases in DNA replication. And fifth one is what is the function of the RNA primer in DNA replication. Here I am suggesting some references for your further study. The first one is Leninger Principles of Biochemistry written by Albert L. Leninger, David L. Nelson, Michael M. Cox, W. H. Freeman, 4th edition, printed by Book News, Portland in 2004. DNA Replication, 2nd edition, written by Arthur Kornberg and Tania A. Baker, edition by University Science Books in 2005. Microbiology, written by Lansing M. Prescott, John P. Harley, Donald A. Klein, in 5th edition, published by McGraw Hill Higher Education in 2002. Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry, 26th edition, written by Robert Kincaid Murray, Dariel K. Graner, Peter A. Mice, and Victor W. Rodwell, published by Lange Medical, McGraw Hill in 2003. Thank you so much for watching this program. We can meet in next section with a new topic. Thank you.